Alright, thanks for watching and today I would like to talk to you about the metallic ratios which are a really neat generalization of the golden ratio and you'll see. And so today it's all about their properties and in a couple of other videos I'll show you other neat cases where they appear. But today is like a general overview. So what are the metallic ratios or the metallic numbers? They're the solutions to the equation x squared minus nx minus 1 equals to 0, where x is positive. I guess the solution to this with x positive. The point is, those metallic ratios did depend on n. For every n, we get a certain ratio. So for example, for n equals to 1, we get x squared minus x minus 1 equals to 0. And if you apply the quadratic formula, you get that the only positive solution is x equals to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, which is usually called the golden ratio. And now you may wonder why those are called the metallic ratios or the metallic numbers. Well, for n equals to 2, we get x squared minus 2x minus 1. So careful, minus 1, not uh, plus 1. And if you do that, then you get that the discriminant is 8. So x is 2 plus square root of 8 over 2, which you can simplify to 1 plus square root of 2. And that's what's called, guess what? the silver ratio. And in general, notice you can actually solve this equation and you get phi n equals to n plus square root of 4 plus n squared over 2. And in general, those are called the metallic ratios. So for n equals to 1, you get the golden ratio. For n equals to 2, you get the silver ratio. For n equals to 3, you get, guess what? The bronze ratio, and then I guess the platinum, diamond, emerald, whatever, sun, moon, black, white, Oreo cookie, I don't know, <laughs> ratio. But again, Today is just all about an overview of those. So what are the properties that they satisfy? Or like, in other words, where do they appear? And really my, my point is to show that they generalize the golden ratios. So first of all, where they appear is the continued fraction. Because the question is, so I think one of the things that maybe led to the, probably not, but one of the things where the golden ratio appears is the following. What is the value of this fraction? 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus dot dot dot. Question is, what is the value? Notice it's sort of fractal appearing, right? Because this number, let's call this x, well, it solves the following equation, x equals to 1 plus 1 over, what is that? Well, that's x again. So x satisfies x equals to 1 plus 1 over x. You multiply this by x, and you get x squared equals to x plus 1, which gives you x equals to the golden ratio. 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. That's where the golden ratio appears. And you may wonder, when, where do the metallic ratio appear? Well, something similar. What if you replace 1 by n? So the question is, what is the value of n plus 1 over n plus 1 over n plus dot dot dot? Well, if you let x to be that, then x equals to n plus 1 over x. And again, x squared equals to nx plus 1 which gives you the meta metallic ratio. So x equals to phi n. So for instance, if you want to ask yourself what is 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over blah, 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 
the answer would be the silver ratio, which is 1 plus square root of 2. So the metallic ratios appear in continued continued fractions. Okay. Here's another neat idea where they appear. It turns out also in geometry. It's quite nice. So geometry, and that may be where it originally appeared because I don't know if you know, but for the golden ratio, it satisfies the following. Suppose you have a rectangle where you cut out a square, one, one, one. And the question is, which number do you have to choose? Let's call it phi such that the ratio of the length and the width of the two squares are sort of the same. So first of all, for the big, big rectangle, the length over the width, well, by definition, is phi over 1. But the idea is, in order for that rectangle to be beautiful, we need the ratio of the big length over the width to be the ratio of the small length over the width. So notice this length becomes 1, this length is phi minus 1. So for the small rectangle, length over the width, So here 1 is bigger than phi minus 1, so this becomes 1 over phi minus 1. And we call it a perfect rectangle, think of a perfect face or something, if those two ratios are equal. So if phi over 1 equals to 1 over phi minus 1, if you cross multiply, you get phi times phi minus 1 equals to 1. So phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals to 0. And this gives you the golden ratio. Phi equals to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. The question is, well, that gives us a golden ratio. What is the analog of the metallic ratios? Well, let me illustrate, I guess, with the case n equals to 2. It's the same idea, except this time you cut out two squares of length 1. So let me illustrate the case n equals to 2. The other ones are similar. Again, suppose you're a rectangle with width 1 and length, let's call it phi 2. And this time, you cut out two squares out of it. Then, for the big rectangle, the aspect ratio is phi 2 over 1. And for the small rectangle, let's see, here we cut out two squares of length 1. So the remaining length becomes phi 2 or minus 2. And this time we want the original aspect is phi 2 over 1. The smaller aspect is 1 over phi 2 minus 2. So again, cross multiply. Phi 2 times phi 2 minus 2 equals to 1. So phi 2 squared minus 2 phi 2. Lots of 2's today. Well, fortunately, unfortunately, it's not 2's day, right? But no, it's okay. Uh, and minus 1 equals to 0. And that precisely gives us the silver ratio. So remember, x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals to 0. That gives us x equals to 1 plus, and let me see, I guess, uh, square root of 2. And, of course, you can just generalize this to any number of squares, and for general n, that will give us the metallic ratios. So, pretty, pretty neat, I think. Okay, so next. So the next ones are actually separate videos I've done, so, uh, no, not yet, so one more. <laughs>
One more because I want to show you it's a generalization of the Fibonacci sequence. Well, remember the Fibonacci sequence is defined as Fm plus 2 equals to Fm plus 1 plus Fm. So think of the number of bunnies produced after two months if they, you know, they produce it after a month and the original one. So this work is called the Fibonacci sequence. And if you remember how to solve it, well, you just plug in, you know, a uh, guess of r to the n, and you find this r has to solve a phi squared equals to phi plus 1. Okay, with the guess, guess fm equals to r to the n. Okay, sorry, phi to the n. And that way you build up your general solution for the Fibonacci sequence. And the guess is, what do you have to do to get the metallic ratios? All you have to do is replace this one with an n. So fm plus 2 equals to n fm plus 1 plus fm. If you again plug in your guess, fm equals to phi to the m, then you find that phi squared equals to n phi plus 1. And I believe that gives you your uh, golden ratios. Okay. Uh, sorry, your, your uh, metallic ratios. So it's really, really neat. I think it's, uh, let me think of a situation where this happens if like, I guess, lots of lots of bunnies get produced after a while. I think. Let me think. Uh, next month. Uh, some weird scenario, I guess, where bunnies, like your parents duplicate or something, because uh, it's not quite where the parents, they uh, produce two children or something, that would be NFM, but it's somehow you have your parent bunnies and they also duplicate and the children produce children. So it's, it's something not very natural, not a natural bunny scenario, but <laughs> it's still really, really cool. And also, by the way, the way you solve this with linear algebra is you replace this equation uh, with the matrix. And let's say 1, 1, 1, 0, because essentially fm plus 2 equals to 1, fm plus 1 plus 1 fm, and fm plus 1, you just add the trivial equation, which is 1 fm plus 1 plus 0 fm. So that's how you get the matrix for the Fibonacci sequence and the matrix for the uh, N Bonacci sequence, I guess. It will just become uh, N times 1, 1, 0. The only difference is instead of this one, you put an N. Okay, and that's another application of the metallic ratio. And then the last two just refer to videos that I've either done or I will do. So they also naturally occur when you ask the question, which functions have the property that f inverse of x equals to the nth derivative of x? So in other words, with proper, which functions have the property that the nth derivative of f gives you the f, the inverse of f, well, for n equals to 1, we've seen that it involves the golden ratio, and for general n, well, you know, in another video I've made or that I will make, we'll see that it somehow involves the metallic ratios. And last but not least, there's something called the metallic integral, and that's sort of silly, but if you evaluate this integral, the integral of x over 2 square root of x squared plus 4 plus n plus 2 over 2n dx. If you evaluate that using either, uh, well, it's u sub or like a trig sub, then in fact you get this integral equals to phi n. And that is another video that I've either done or that I will do. And Lastly, I've seen this picture. I don't know where it comes from, but I think if you have a regular pen, uh, I guess, let's see, a uh, regular octagon, 
and that's sort of very specific to the metal the silver ratio but if you have a regular octagon then it turns out um, remember there's this formula for the sum of the angles of a uh, regular n-gon is pi times n minus 2 well if you have an octagon then the sum of the angles is pi times 8 minus 2 which is 6 pi which means each angle is 6 pi over 8 which is 3 pi over 4 in particular if you uh, if you take this angle, you get 90 degrees, pi over 2, and this angle becomes pi over 4. And what I'm trying to illustrate is, suppose those two lengths are equal. If this length is 1, then each of those lengths will be 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2 because this angle is pi over 4. In particular, if this length is 1, this length will become, I guess, a square root of 2 over 2 plus 1 plus square root of 2 over 2, which becomes 1 plus square root of 2, which is precisely where the silver ratio appears. So this also appears in geometry, but I'm not 100% sure how to generalize this. But it might be something very specific to the uh, silver ratio. But anyway, I hope you like this excursion into the world of metallic ratios. If you want to see more math and more fun, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.